the Rolif screen. This was something that the owner of this van wanted. And with the uh, COVID restrictions in Canada, she wasn't getting it. So she asked if they could ship it to me and I could take a crack at installing it. And to be honest, going in, I was a little intimidated. I was a little concerned about this because I know how involved and detailed they are to make. As it turns out, it was easy. It was a piece of cake. Uh, it's so well thought out and so detailed. It's incredible. The thing fits like a glove. Now you do have to send measurements. Uh, you know, a lot of the vans have a peninsula that comes into this opening. You got to send them all those measurements and coordinates, and then they will custom cut this thing to fit. But uh, yeah, I mean, I played with this thing. I worked on it. The curtain's in the way, but uh, it's, it's even, it's pretty easy to tune. It just goes right back into place. Back door as well. Get open. Get there. Same thing. Very easy. Very easy to work. Down she goes. There's a little sleeve that this arm goes in. It's incredible. Yeah, see? Look how nice that is. Well, I have to put the refrigerator back in. That's gonna rest up in this area. But right here, you can see my modified panel under the refrigerator. Uh, I had to flip things around a little bit in order to make more room inside that cabinet. So this panel is now held in with magnets and to remove it, you'd put your fingers in this cowling and it pops right out. There's eight magnets that hold that panel in place. Now let me show you what we got inside here. So this is the cabin heater. And as you saw that cowling, uh, this is the back side of that cowling. See that, that just fits right in the heater. When you put this panel back in place, boom, it's connected. And then alongside that, let me get some light on it. This is the water pump. This is that big ass water pump, the AquaJet from Remco. The only thing you need to do in here is get in every couple of months and clean out this filter basket. There's a little uh, stainless steel screen in there. So you put a towel under here to catch the water, take this cap off and just clean the basket and put it back. That's all you should have to do in this cabinet. Uh, anything else is re gonna require uh, bigger maintenance and then you gotta go in from the top. I'll show you that next. So I am speaking to you from a side access panel in the refrigerator module. I'm laying on the futon frame and this access panel comes out after removing two screws. That's right, only two. Panel comes out, you have access to the compressor that's on the side of the refrigerator here. And uh, if you wanted to work further on these components, four screws, the refrigerator comes out. And uh, that's not optimal. I hate to have to pull the fridge every time I want to come in here and do any work, but it's not terrible. And the reason is that's a drawer style refrigerator uh, and the drawers come out. So you would pull the drawers out, set them aside. That makes the refrigerator carcass even lighter. I slid this thing out and put it off to the side by myself. It's relatively easy to do. You can see here that I've got my my tracks, my sled tracks for the refrigerator. So when this thing, you set it on this and the feet of the fridge slide right back on these tracks. It couldn't be any easier. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to have to access this. Uh, when you have a fixed bed situation, all these mechanicals are back there with far uh, easier access. Uh, you can crawl in from underneath, you can peel the mattress back. This isn't optimal. Okay, I've made my point. So the water pump is basically in the same place and it's important that it stays there because you need to access this screen filter cup periodically to clean it out. 
I added an even larger loop of soft hose before I get to my PEX tubing, which is rigid and carries sound and vibration. This larger loop really does a lot to dampen the noise and vibration caused by this pump. And uh, same thing on the other side, the line feeding the pump is uh, flexible soft tubing. Uh, another thing I did is I added a check valve into the main supply feed to the pump. The check valve is at the lowest point in that travel of that hose from the water tank to the pump. The reason we need that is the water pump is higher than the output of that fresh water tank. So at some point when the water in the tank gets low, you're gonna start sucking air and water because you're higher than the water level. So as the water flows to the pump, you shut the pump off, the water can't run back down the hose because the check valve stops it. It's a one-way valve. So that goes a long way to keeping continuity, keeping water in the system without air. This is the fan on the back of this heat exchanger that sucks the cold air and it pulls it from every which way behind these modules and under the futon and then sends it back out. So again, what I spoke about in the Vagabond van is occurring here. You are returning the cabin air to be reheated. If you put your Airtronic heater under the seat up front, you're pulling the cold cockpit air, which is generally closed off from the cabin. There's no way to return it and keep that circular motion and that convection going. You always wanna have that, you wanna be able to reheat the cabin air. Uh, a little complaint the owner had was with the futon transport system that I developed. Uh, the futon rides on a very, very intricate series of profile rails from 8020. I'm actually moving this, laying down with one hand, the whole futon. Anyway, uh, when you're traveling, you need to have this thing locked in place so it's not sliding and slamming every which way. Originally, when I designed it and built it, I used these lever handles. Levers are easier to manage as we get older than a knob, okay? But she didn't like it. She just couldn't get under here. This is that kind of a ratchet thing. She didn't like that. Ask and ye shall receive. I got her a nice, big, rubber, knurled knob knurled knob knurled <clears throat> one of the quick fixes i had to do was these light switches you know they all fell so i came up with a nice clean system to fix that they should stay put now and then there was the repair wait can you see me i'm over here now see um if you remember all this stuff broke uh, the, it didn't break, but the glue let loose. So unfortunately, the only solution with this, because it's acrylic sheets a quarter inch, was to put screws through. I needed to put in screws. They're decorative, they got finished washers. And uh, I mean, it works now. There's no way you're gonna bust this around. I adjusted the magnets. So they work just fine. We did talk about replacing these doors with uh, a half inch, three quarter inch walnut. Um, it can be done. It changes everything. It changes the way they fit flush. The door stops have to be remade. So it's a project for another day. Uh, one thing I did learn um, while I was doing this job and all these popped off, I had to clean away that glue uh, Alex used a special glue, I think it's called uh, P210, something like that. Anyway, it left a great deal of residue on the plexi. So I studied up, I researched, what do I use to get this glue off the plexi? Nothing I tried worked, so I had to go to my trusty standby, acetone. Now the acetone destroyed the finish of the acrylic. Now I'm working on the inside, the back side, because if there were to be a problem, that's where I'd rather have it than on the front. Smart, huh? 
except I had this laying down on a, a piece of cardboard on my work table and the acetone, I guess that's capillary action, the acetone came around and underneath and it ruined the face of the cabinet as well. Now, what am I gonna do? I had these special ordered from Canal Plastics in Manhattan. Okay, stay calm, George. Uh, I went to Home Depot and I got a selection of sandpapers and I went to town. And you know what, serendipity, is that what you call it? Something good came out of this. It looked like I'm on an angle. I gotta go this way. Something good came out of this. Uh, I started with a, a 400 grit sandpaper and I sanded this thing down. And then as I cleaned it away and looked at it, I liked it. It's a dull, it's just, it's just color. It's, th there's nothing to it. It's a nondescript surface. It's just color. Oh man, I loved it. Uh, and I really thought long and hard about making the face of these things that dull color. Uh, less fingerprints to worry about, smudges. Uh, but that's not how the van was built. And I didn't want to get involved in yet another discussion and set of decisions for the owner. What I did is I left the backsides with that dull finish. And the face, after my 400 grit sandpaper, I went to 600, then I went to 1,000, and 3,000 sandpaper, 3,000 grit wet sanding, brought this baby back to glossy. I'm no longer afraid of acrylic. Raptor liner. This stuff is so cool. Raptor liner, truck bed liner, okay? I would do the whole van in this. I would do the whole van. This is such a cool surface. This is my man Lou Amato from Jersey Shore Fabricators. I'll put a link in the description because if you're local, you're gonna want Lou working on your van. He's a detail guy, surprised. Uh, he, he takes that Raptor liner, he covers it around the edges so you don't see any white bleeding through. The edge of this hood right here, Raptor liner. So in this case, we did this for uh, the protection factor and the badass factor. This looks so cool. So it's the hood, the surround, and down the sides, below the, uh, the bump rail, the plastic bump rail that's on the van. Uh, we did it all the way down the sides as well. So nice. Another feature the owner requested after using the van for a year, uh, it became evident that this gully, this step was a problem. Primarily when the futon is in the bed position. If you notice, we pull it forward and then down, there's not a lot of room here. You gotta be really careful about moving about right here. So she asked if I could have some kind of a step cover or just extend this floor uh, for at night. And I said, yeah, I know exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put a piece of steel plate and hinge it on the sliding door. Mount it to the sliding door. You close the slider and that cover plate comes down, covers the gully. And she said, okay, but I also want this to be full and even flooring when the doors open. I said, well, now that could be a problem. I said, if you've got an even flooring here, you're gonna feel compelled to step from this higher level to the floorboard and then to the ground. There's a reason this step is here. It's safety reasons. She said, no, no, it's for my dogs. When I have the screens closed here, uh, I don't want them, they're small dogs, I don't want them to fall down the hole. I said, okay, I know what I can do, but you gotta promise me that you're not gonna jump off this high step now and, uh, and get hurt, and then have your lawyers call me. So I had to build this, and it had to also play nice with my roll of 
screen. So now this is a really gutsy, uh, we're all one level. And uh, when the door is closed, it's really nice in here. You've got a nice big dance floor, wide open. And uh, um, the way it turns out, um, this owner rarely uses this door to exit and enter. She uses the front door. So she did express to me she's probably going to leave this in most of the time. Most of the time. Which will give her more storage underneath. What I did with this is, of course it's 80-20 on the bottom, uh, but it's adjustable, you can take it apart. I put a piece of 80-20 tread on one side, the front, the leading edge. And what that does is when you put this thing in place, it cants it towards the rear. This is, it's, it's such a perfect fit. Uh, it cants it towards the rear, and it prevents it from doing any movement. Uh, it worked out really well. I like, the, I like the end result. I'm just a little concerned uh, about anybody trying to navigate from this step to that step to the ground. That's where you could get hurt. It was a number of features. There were a number of features that we didn't get to last year. And we had to get her on the road. She had to get back to SoCal and I had to get started on the Vagabond van. Uh, one of those uh, that we left for this trip was a Lagoon table mount right here on this passenger swivel seat. I put the swivels in, you remember that video. Uh, but now we've got this Lagoon, very happy the way I put this in using 8020. So it's actually, it's telescoping. It can be raised or lowered at two points. And uh, I positioned it and I sized it just so it could turn and fit right into this little corner here. It plays nice with my Roleth magnet screen. And you come right around and here you go. And uh, I positioned it and sized it for the owner. She can sit here comfortably. This size tabletop is 16 by 22. That allows her laptop and a drink, laptop and a snack dress, dinner, you know, the whole bit. TV's right over there. Uh, another thing that the owner does, this is kind of clever. This is a, a stuff sack hassock. She keeps all her bedding in here during the day. Okay. So during the day, her bedding is hiding in plain sight. It's an ottoman. So she puts her feet up there. She settles in here with a nice drink and her laptop. She's got the TV going. You recline a little bit. This is nice. This is a very comfortable, where, oh, it's over here, the arm. This is very comfortable. I made her a custom tabletop. It was gonna be a surprise. She doesn't know it yet. But uh, it was a piece of three quarter inch birch plywood and I put a, a quarter inch walnut veneer glued to the front. I brought it to Alex, Alex edge banded it. Okay, I did a really nice job of staining. I did some ebony feathering around the perimeter. And uh, I think my tongue oil was bad. Put the tongue oil on and it was just a, an awful finish. It's still not even, it's still tacky after two days. I started to sand it away, try to redo it. I ruined it. I ruined it. <clears throat> I spent a lot of time you know, you got a beautiful black ebony edge and I feathered it to the walnut with stain. Ugh, I ruined it. So, no harm, no foul. The owner after today is gonna stay in the area for a week, testing the systems, making sure everything is just the way she wants it before she heads west. During that week, I'll make a new tabletop. I'll get it up to Alex's shop so he can edge band it. Maybe I won't get so fancy this time. It could be a lot worse. We're in good shape. It's all good. Another little feature that the owner wanted while she was back for the tighten up is an idea that she saw on uh, a video channel called Sarah and Alex James. Sarah and Alex or Sarah, Sarah and James, 40 hours of freedom. Uh, so this is not my idea. Uh, but I did implement it for her. Take a look at this. 
So this makes it easier for the owner to fill her water tank. Like I said, this is an idea. This is something that uh, Sarah and Alex James put on their vans. And it's a clever idea, I have to say. I took a, uh, uh, a water hose, a potable water hose, and you just put an end on it that's got a valve. This is all garden hose. Valve is very important. And this runs back into the top of the tank. I put the inlet in the lid of my access hatch. That way I haven't compromised the tank. I haven't made any extra holes in the tank in case this system was one that fails. We just need to get a new lid. And it comes right around the back. I put a little stopper in there so the futon frame is, uh, it's protected from the futon frame and it runs right out to the driver's side. So now instead of swiveling the seat and reaching back with a wand or a hose to fill through the access hatch, which is the way I originally designed it, it was too far of a stretch for her. She had to move the futon, extra steps. I have to agree, this was a good fix. So now she just takes this and just connects her water hose and does her filling out here. And the valve is what allows her to stop the water flow. The valve got to be closed when you put it away, otherwise you're going to uh, have a mess. The reason I put it here like this is in case that valve inadvertently does stay open or weeps, it's going to weep into this area and find its way right out of the van. It's not going to create any kind of a big mess in the back. So this was a good deal. Thank you, Alex and Sarah James. So I left all my 80-20 profiles at a full 70 inches. And the reason for that is options. There may come a time where they want to put awnings or some type of rack up here. They'll have the facility to do so. I think the black is pretty cool. It does scratch, so you have to be careful with it. But it's a lot of fun. Uh, the 8020 portion is very flexible. You've got a lot of options uh, in how you mount. Really easy. I love it. Some people had asked me from my Instagram photos, why didn't you get the smooth? Well, uh, I could be wrong about this, but my thinking is that these grooves are going to cause airflow disruption, and uh, that will minimize any chance of whistling or vibration uh, of the air passing across these rails as you go down the road. Uh, these brackets, I bought these online. I'm very unhappy with them. They're made in China and they're very costly. Uh, the T-nut portion is crap uh, and it's not a 5 16 screw, so it's not like you can use uh, your good stuff from 8020. Uh, I've decided that uh, from here on in, I'll make my own brackets. I'll do a much better job than these and a lot cheaper. These are ridiculously expensive, but it's solid. I'm happy with the final construct. It's very solid.